Hello everyone, it's Kay here and I'm here today with a couple of things that I've made over the last few days. I've not been idle, never am, but I was watching a video by Amanda Charlesworth who is Scrimping Mama here on YouTube and she is undertaking the hashtag 100 things challenge to um, I think use stamping up products throughout to showcase a lot of the wonderful things that are coming into being in the autumn catalogue and using things already in her stash and what she made to start the journey off was, was what she called a squash album. Now I'm not familiar with them but I liked the concept as I've said to anyone following me, I have a wealth of these lovely do craft papers still left over. If I could only, well, I'll show you. I'm just amazed that it's just going on and on and on and on. It's the Back to Basics Dovecraft, beg your pardon, 8 by 8 Baby Steps. For those of you that have commented on it, liked it. This is the pack and I still, with everything that I've done, have this amount of the pack left over. It's absolutely incredible. I don't quite know how I will use it all, but I'm determined that having started, I will use up the pad one way or another. And I decided I would utilise it to go with what I've done already for a new baby and follow Amanda's tutorial for the squash album. So what you do basically is use a 6x12 piece of card, decorate it as I have here in whatever way you like. I just love this owl paper. I've used a tiny little round punch on the centre to mount the lovely little teddy bear and then when you open it up, to all intents and purposes, it looks like a book. But when you take one of the little tags that are integral to the book, it opens up in this manner and it is absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, it can either be a brag book, you could use it just for scribbling, you could put tiny little photographs on it whatever whatever you liked and it is such a lovely project to make and I'm, I know Amanda's done a few more since this and all of them are really really lovely so if and I'm sure most of you will know Amanda but if you don't know Amanda I will leave a link under her channel under this video so that you can pop along and see how this transpires and how it comes about it really is a super duper project and so so easy because once you've got the folds in place that is really all you do close it over tie it up and you've got a lovely little something that will fit in your handbag or you know just <laughs> carry with you if that's what you want to do or just keep alongside everything baby and keep it for a keepsake and memorabilia so do go along and check out Amanda as I say if you don't know her then I had um, my weekly prompt and it goes out to all the members of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More group on Facebook. And I was really taken with the theme. This is the second week of the travel month, which is what we seem to be in this month. Now, I've never been to Africa or anywhere like that, but thanks to the wonder of movies, etc, etc, I have a vague idea of what Africa must look like by colour and so I've made two iCAD related to travel and they're four by six. This is the first one I did and I wanted it to be representative of the wide open spaces of Africa with some trees, the zebra, 
the flat top trees there in the background. I've used um, Tim Holtz Oxide inks and it's greens. I can't remember the actual colours, I do apologise, but two greens, this ready colour. The black stays on for the main part of the inks and then this I stamped out this word explore cut it out and just put it onto it's a bit busy I don't know how clear it actually is on film but I hope you get the gist, gist of it I then backed it onto some plain black card and covered the whole thing in glossy Mod Podge just to preserve and keep everything where it is at the moment because colours do fade over time you know and these will be two, th two things that go into my little art journal book that I started during the 100 things challenge and then the second one I did is still about travel and time and it says there a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step well how true is that it really is I've stamped again I can't remember urban stamps I believe it is with the clocks and so on it didn't come out very well I did have to go in and touch up here and there with some of my um, watercolour pencils and then just blend it all in so it didn't look too higgledy piggledy but to anyone who's got this stamp and they're thinking oh my gosh mine is mine doesn't stamp like that is because I really have barbarized the stamp even even the guy's parting isn't quite where it ought to be but it works for me <laughs> again the same colors as before the reds the greens I just using a technique from Nina Ribena planted my squares of ink onto a glass cutting board which was also textured and then soaked up the 4x6 white card with the paint as far as it went and then just blended in some solid colour over the top of that to give the overall look of the colours. There's writing and so on, clocks, you name it, it's all there. So I hope you found these interesting. I've not done anything of this nature before and I really am quite pleased with how they came out in the end. I was worried all the way along but you know just keeping in my head well there are no wrong ways it has to be the vision or or inspiration of the person making the project I have gone along with that very much and decided okay it's not quite right but I like it and <laughs> perhaps that's a way to go when you're starting out on new uh, techniques and that kind of thing so once again thank you so much for sharing this time with me I do appreciate it Happy crafting everyone, have a great great weekend, it's looming up very very quickly, take care, bye bye for now.